November 3rd, 2015. And yep, we're almost done with the year. Pretty scary, huh? So how'd you do with the time change? We don't do that here in Hawaii, which is really nice. But I bet you that now that you did do the time change, which I think it's you're gone um, on a slower time, you must be doing, ah, because your body's kind of getting back into the normal whatever it's supposed to be. But it's not supposed to be on the fast time. That's for darn sure. So tonight, I'm going to have a wonderful doctor on, Dr. Ann West, um, the first hour. And she's a spiritual psychologist, a Reiki master, certified hypnotherapist, holotropic breathwork facilitator. And I can't wait to hear what that one is. Life coach, nonviolent communication teacher and workshop leader, author, and she has her own radio show. She's an amazing woman. And the second half, I want to share with you how to sign your name without assuming liability. Yeah, I found her in that one. Bet she didn't even know that you could do that, huh? Oh, there's so many different possibilities out there. Moss going to give you your radiation level for the week. And really, it's not pretty. And if we have time, we'll do a couple prayers to help Israel become an awakened country. And I will definitely this week get the curse removal energy balancing in because I don't know about you, but I sure could use it. So I want to give a shout out to the Teamsters, local 730 and 639 in Maryland. And just wanted to let them know that we do stand with them. And hey, guys, if you see them, if you live in Maryland at all and you see these guys out there picketing, oh, do something nice for them. Give them some support. Um, Safeway who they're picketing against has enjoyed a long and profitable relationship with the people of Maryland and Washington, DC. Now these communities supply Safeway with a loyal clientele and a dedicated workforce, but now Safeway plans to move up to 900 good union jobs from Prince George's County to a low wage non-union grocery warehouse in Pennsylvania. So Maryland has been devastated by companies shipping out good jobs. And I'm from Michigan, boy, and talk about, you know, a state that hasn't been more devastated, but we're talking about Maryland now. You know, it's really painful to see that Safeway plans to join the ranks of all those companies shipping out all the good jobs and put hundreds of Teamsters Members of local 730 and 639 out in the cold during the holiday season. So, you know, if you can call Safeway, say it's not acceptable. And, you know, go do something nice for those guys and and those men and women that are out there picketing and demanding their rights. Because every win that the little guy has is a win for everybody. So good luck, guys. Um, We do stand with you. Now, last week, I, maybe it was a couple weeks ago. uh, Life has gone by so quickly. I took a trip out to um, Washington, D.C. for personal reasons. And, you know, I live in Hawaii. And Hawaii is very clean. Um, We breathe clean air. You know, we don't have industry here. So just to make a point, so then I had to fly in very high radiation because of Fukushima going on the fourth year. And then I spent time in Washington itself and not a lot of time outside because it was freezing cold. Oh, my God, it was like down between 45 and 55. Uh, Go ahead and laugh. But, you know, I'm used to 80 degree weather. So, you know, someone would go, you want to go out for a walk? I would go, "Uh uh-uh. And I became an in-house couch potato. But, and then I flew back. And, you know, I'm one of the cleanest people you ever met. I bathe twice a day. I love taking a cleansing bath, you know, which is my personal time. And I was really fine. I took all my vitamins. I did all my cleanses. I wore my mask. And then after I got back here, I had 
scratched myself and I scratched my nose and I'm talking about it because I'm already healed from it. Um, but it immediately got infected. And like a day later, I had to go into the emergency ward. Now, I'm not one who takes antibiotics. So I could walk in there and go, guys, you know, just give me antibiotics that doesn't have a lot of side effects. And you've got to be really careful nowadays with what is happening and when you fly. Now, this wasn't a normal infection. I've not ever had an infection this bad where my nose swelled and it went into my lip and I could have been an extra on the planet of the apes and I wouldn't have needed a costume, okay? That's how bad my lip looked. So I knew I needed antibiotics, and if you need it, then go. But then you do the other things you need to do to cleanse, okay? I upped all my vitamins. I put hot compresses on that infection to pull it out. I did enemas, which nobody likes to do, but when you've got an infection in your body, all it does is recirculate, and until you literally pull it out of your body, you're going to stay sick. So you do a couple of those to pull the infection out or, you know, as many as you need to. And then I had the doctors, I made them Lancet, which wasn't really cool, especially when it's in your nose. And I made her do it because I couldn't do it. You know, I know what my pain threshold is, but she didn't. And I knew the doctor would go at it and just go at it until it was all gone. Does this not sound gross or what? Well, tell me, it really was. But she got all the infection out at that time. And my God, I felt like somebody rammed a, a hot poker up my sinuses for the next hour and a half because it hurt so bad. And then it was able to start healing. Why? Because I pulled the poison out. And then I got a bag of salt, and or sock of salt, dry salt. And I, of course, tie the end or it gets really messy. And you don't need a lot of salt. And when I slept at night, I kept that salt over my lip and my nose. And trust me, it was not easy. But when you want to heal, you make effort. And you do it all. So in 10 days' time, which is today is my 10th day, I'm over it. And I am happy to say I'm over it. But God, if you get an infection or something happens to you now, man, you go to the health food store, you figure out what you got to need to heal it. And then if you have to go to the doctor and then ask him and really ask him what your alternatives are. And what I found is, you know, the new doctors, the young ones, oh, they're really in, easy to intimidate where the old doctors would come in and go, this is it. And I could go in there and tell them what I want done. And I don't have to get anything unnecessary. And we would talk it over, which was, I think was rather nice of them. And, you know, they understood the decision and we would come to something together and work together. And it was really interesting because when the doctor asked me what I was doing, I was told him like the hot compresses and the salt and the salt baths. And he said, awesome. And I almost choked. It's like, whoa, you're agreeing with me? Now, truthfully, if I could have gotten down to my Chinese doctor, who, by the way, lives in California and I'm in Hawaii, so that's really not practical. I figured, and I have done this before, I figured by the time I called him up, and got the order, I would have been five extra days into the illness, and I could not take that risk. So, you know, use, be conscious, and sit down and think about, you know, what the possibilities are. And truthfully, again, if I could have gotten down to my Chinese doctor, I would not have bothered with the doctor. Because, man, Chinese medicine, those guys are, you know, it's, it's over 2,000 years old. Their knowledge, they get it. And, you know, you end up taking herbs. Now, we call them swamp juice. But my doctor used to um, teach in the universities in China. So he would charge, for whatever reason, only 10 to $12 for a consultation. And then he would make up a big bag of herbs that you would cook. 
So you'd start at five cups of water, boil it down to a, a cup, and then you would hold your nose, take a deep breath, and go to life. And then you swill it down, and you do your best not to upchuck it. I, I, when I say it tastes like swamp juice, I am not kidding. But really, what medicine <laughs> tastes good, right? You know, and if you know it's natural and it's flushing stuff out of your body, then you're going to swell it down. And when my kids were little, oh, my God, my ex-husband and I would literally hold them down and we'd get a baster, a big baster, and we would have to squirt that stuff in their mouths. And, you know, as they got older, they would be able to drink it and they understood that they had to take it. But it's like, what's your what's your option here? The natural remedies or you got to go to the doctor and get that stuff that really isn't good all the time for you. But if you don't have access to Chinese herbs, your alternative is the doctor. Just use, you know, what knowledge you have. And again, you could even go to a health food store and they can give you some suggestions on some health food things to take that might even be able to shift it. There's all kinds of possibilities out there. So tonight we're going to have Anne, Dr. Ann West on. And like I said, she's a spiritual psychologist, a Reiki master, a certified hypnotherapist, a holotropic breathwork facilitator. And Anne, I can't wait for you to tell me what that is. <laughs> a life coach, nonviolent communication teacher and workshop leader. That's something we all need an author and radio talk show host. Welcome, Anne. Thank you so much, Kathy. It's lovely to be here with you. I am so pleased you, you came on. And you're from Harbor Springs, aren't you? Harbor yes, Hot Springs. Um, yes, Harbor Hot Springs, unfortunately, as you probably know, has burned to the ground, but is recreating itself. So in the near future, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, go there again and and soak at least as a as a day guest. Oh, that's lo- I love hot springs. Oh my god, I I miss them so dearly. But you've got some wonderful um, um, uh, 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 teachings and services that you're you're offering to people. Can we just jump ahead and can you explain what a holotropic breathwork facilitator is? Absolutely. Um, I would love to. Holotropic breathwork is a way of diving into the subconscious. It was originally uh, created, discovered, invented by a Dr. Stanislav Grof, who was a psychiatrist, European gentleman, who was just exploring ways to be able to access the subconscious mind where trauma and crisis had been stored in the body, in the mind, and yet in everyday life we don't have access to it, but it still affects our life. And so he started um, to find ways through the breath to access the subconscious mind And it's a safe and simple way for anyone to trigger extraordinary states of consciousness, opening up the doors wide to deeper spiritual understanding. So we get to go into the forgotten realms of our psyche and release these uh, memories so that we can really heal on a much, much deeper level. It's very shamanic. Well, if I can be so bold, is there any way you can offer us just even a little um, snippet of this breathwork? Yes, sure. So we can sure. experience so it, it. I can, I can, um, I, you wouldn't normally do this without a facilitator to the extent where you would get the results because some, to be very honest with you, Kathy, what, ha- what happens sometimes I've worked with hundreds of people with this breathing technique. I can tell you, I can give you a little glimpse into it, um, but when, when done correctly and when facilitated with uh, a, 
a person who knows how to watch for your body movements, how to, to see where you're holding the tension, help you to release it. The deeper you can go, I've had, I've had multiple women in my 20 years of using holotropic breathwork as a practice to go deep into the inner psyche that have done the breathwork and discovered parts of themselves they didn't know had even, they had even experienced. For instance, women that have done this work and uncovered why they had so many issues in their relationships and, and sometimes even medical issues because they had been sexually molested but didn't remember any of it until we did this work. So it's very, very profound work and it's not normally something I would suggest somebody does on their own as a thing to just practice on their own. It's very important if you do hit a place where you do have full memory recall of something traumatic that there's somebody there to be able to support you to transition through it. Oh, that makes absolute sense. So do you do a lot of um, some of this work through Skype then? I can do it through Skype, but I prefer, I do a lot of counseling on, with, in Skype, with Skype. Um, I do a lot of uh, couples work and individual work. Um, and I do help people to get through traumas and teach them how to do trauma release. The, the holotropic breath work is a little difficult to do via Skype because um, I think there's more support generally that is needed um, with the breath work. But I'll give you a little, a little glimpse into it. The first thing I always say is to, uh, to lay down flat on your back and to put your feet up on the floor so your ankles are touching, your feet are flat on the floor, and your knees are up pointing to the ceiling. And you separate your knees so you're kind of in a vulnerable position, kind of like as if you almost like going to the gynecologist where your legs are apart, but your feet are actually together, just your knees are apart. And you have one hand on your belly and the other hand facing up by the side of you. You're going to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And the other thing about holotropic breathwork is there's, you use very provocative music to help people to breathe with the drums to breathe with the rhythms. It helps them to move and feel their body, feel the, the spirit that wants to dance inside of you. And you use your breath to ignite that kundalini energy. And so you breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, deep, full inhalations. You never want to do this, breathe shallow. And that's another reason why it's important to have a facilitator because often when you first start this, you could be breathing too shallow and you can hyperventilate. So you don't want to do that because that's not fun. But if you breathe correctly, you breathe deep into your belly. And this is also good if you got into it, if you were afraid something happened, you're in the car, somebody uh, cut you off and you get that adrenaline rush and you need to get centered quickly, you can do this breath, just breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, filling up the diaphragm as if you have a balloon in your belly. So you're breathing out filling that belly up completely and it grounds you, it brings you into your body and it helps to center you very, very quickly. And then what happens is you will go faster with the music because the music is used specifically to guide you and to bring you into an altered state of consciousness. So um, I think that's about as much as I can do with that on the air. Okay. I was, um, yeah, I got to come back. <laughs> I was in it. Okay. So let, let's um, hop to trauma release, which I think a lot of people are in and don't even realize it. Well, that's, that's really true because today, in today's busyness of the world and our lives, there's so many things that are causing trauma for us, especially things like what we've just been through here in, in this area with the massive fires and even losing your home to foreclosure, which so many people have, is a trauma. Let, it's let's, let's talk about what some of the signs of trauma is because you know, I went through it because I lived in California in Topanga Canyon, and we went through many fires there and, and you know heavy rains and mudslides and all that. But the fires, when we went through the big fire, 
I noticed that afterwards, I could go to work and I could do things there. But when I got home, I was like a couch potato. I didn't want to do anything. I had no energy to, you know, I was just there. You know, I didn't have any will to or drive to be creative or to do anything extra. I was just not incapable of it. Kind of like, not quite like a zombie, Mm -hmm. but just not. This is very normal. Life and vigor like I normally am. So some of the symptoms that you would experience are nightmares, sleepless nights, insomnia, flashbacks, an unprecedented or unusual anger, and uh, irritation. If you're having any of those symptoms, then it's what's probably happening is or has happened is that you've experienced something that has basically gotten trapped. The energy of trauma has gotten trapped within your nervous system because what happens with trauma is that when, when something big happens and it shakes us up, the mind, the brain, its job is to deal with it, to, to make us feel safe again as quickly as possible. And so if it, if it doesn't have a way to do that, it will store it quickly, cover it up, and so that you can get on with your life. But once you've had trauma, your nervous system has literally been changed. It's, it's a, it, it's, unless you can go back in to that, to that place and re- release it basically you the what i teach my clients is that when they've had that trauma happen to them um, they have to first of all identify big trauma and little trauma like trauma with a big t or trauma with a little t because we have little t traumas happening quite a lot in life but big t traumas are are the the big stuff that that can get locked into the body and it can take a lifetime if you don't get help or if you don't do some of the things that are important to do, you can keep that trauma for a lifetime and continue to have flashbacks and, um, and different, maybe some people might get a twitch. They might get like a nervous twitch. They might have just, everybody responds quite differently, but, um, if you're rerunning the, the scene in your head, then that's a sign also that you're traumatized. And a good way to help to release trauma like that is to take a moment to identify exactly what it is that you're feeling. Sit for a moment and go into the trauma. Think about the exact thing that happened. Feel the feelings identify them. So you're basically sensing the trauma. You're going to name it. You're going to identify it. And you're going to identify what's going on inside of you. This is the first real step to recovering yourself. And to get grounded is also a vital step in the recovery process to make sure that you get present, that you can see You can feel yourself sitting on a chair. You can feel the coolness on your face. To just just sit and do this little exercise with yourself at any time, if you're sitting in the car at a traffic light, just sit there and feel everything. Because what you're basically doing is coming into your body. If you can come into your body and feel your fingers touching the steering wheel, feel your legs sitting on the chair, feel the, the back of your chair supporting you, feel the, the, the air conditioning on your skin, all of the little things. If you can do all of that, it's bringing you, it, it's grounding you and it's bringing you back into your body because trauma and shock take you out of your body. Oh boy, does it. And you know, I've, I've experienced myself where I've had a very bad fall. I know I love to go dolphin swimming and kayaking and one, you know, I was supposed to go Saturday and this is Friday night. I stupidly got on a chair with wheels to get something high chair went one way and I fell and I did, um, 
you know, the judo slap where, you know, your, your hands take all the hit, right? Oh gosh. Yes. Well, it's, you know, my body just does this, you know, I couldn't do it if I wanted to think about it. And so I hurt my wrist, but because I didn't have anybody to, to guide me that I was in shock and trauma in my mind, because I also have this beautiful stone called angelite that takes you out of pain and untraumatizes everything. My mind was, if I can get the swelling down in my wrist and it, it stops hurting, I'm going kayaking still. And yeah. I, got, I got it to stop hurting. And I did go kayaking. And that was the dumbest thing I ever did. I oh, shouldn't have God. gone. You know, I wasn't in the correct, but I didn't have anybody there to say, um, duh, you, you yes. can't go. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Well, the, the, one of the other important things is um, reciprocity. It's having someone to speak to about the trauma. Because when you can speak about it, you're not keeping it hidden and tucked away in the dark shadows of your psyche. You're bringing it up to the, to the light. You're giving it light. You're honoring it. And when you can speak with another being that can fully hear you, when you're being heard, you're, you're, you'll have visceral feelings of safety. You'll feel supported and that's a big piece of releasing the stress and the trauma. You know, I like that. And, and yeah. that's what I would do with a friend of mine. And then she would gently say, duh, dummy. You know, oh. <laughs> you know, no more, you know, in a nice way. But, you know, no more. You can't do this until you heal. But, I do, but then she also recommended, you know, that I would take Arnica and Rescue Remedy. Uh-huh. Well, that's, they're wonderful. Both of them are wonderful. And... Um, Tromil is also excellent for, which is a homeopathic cream for if you've physically hurt yourself, traumatized your body. What's it called? Tromil. Okay. It, yeah. Um, also, uh, doing yoga and pranayama, which is breathing exercises, to is also another good way to release trauma. But I'm going to give your audience an exercise which is fantastic for getting to the core of your trauma and letting it go. And that is take a moment, take 10 minutes in the morning or at some point in the day when you can and sit for a moment and think about your height of trauma and think about the experience, what you felt, what you feel your body's going through, thinking about it, the sadness, the fear, all of that, let those feelings come to the surface and then put on your most favorite music and shake your body and dance wildly for 10 minutes thinking about your trauma. Because what happens is the trauma that's trapped inside the nervous system will be danced out if you move your body you move your body and in as many ways as you can, you will literally shake the trauma out of your nervous system. This has been used in hospitals and recovery programs by, uh, for many, many years as a, as a path to releasing the trauma. So it's something you can do at home and you can literally shake the trauma out. So if you're feeling... Un, if you're feeling super spaced out, like you were talking about, Kathy, when you got home from work, you feel like a couch potato, you just sit there and space out, that's a sign of trauma. And if you're getting very angry and irritable, it's a sign of trauma. So, and again, if you're getting flashbacks. So try that 10 minutes a day and do that for like a month and see the difference. You'll be, you will rewire yourself into a balanced state you feel so much better. Get you out those old records and boogie, you know? What fun. Yeah. You might even lose some weight if you need to, and, and you'll tone up your body. <laughs> well, yeah, that's for sure. But, you know, I mean, what a joyful way to do it. Yeah. You're not saying going out and go exercise or do something that, 
<coughs> you know, that you got to make yourself do, but go dance, you know, you don't do it even when nobody's around, who cares? And then right after you finish dancing, if you've got a few minutes, get a journal and write about what express your trauma through the dance and then write it out in the language that you feel just does it just automatic writing. It doesn't don't think about it too much. Just write, 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 write. And then you're just you're releasing the the, the remnants of it through your through your arms. You have a radio show. I do. I've had a radio show for 20 years. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. And it's called Truth from the Source Show? Yes. If I pronounce that right, because my, I'm Truth from the Source Show. Yes. Truth from and the what, Source. What do, you have on, yeah, what do you have on the radio show? Well, um, over the past 20 years, I've got probably 6,000 hours of airtime that, um, of interviews that, that I've really enjoyed doing. And I've interviewed everybody from president Clinton to Deepak, Deepak Chopra to Gene Houston, Wayne Dyer, Ram Dass. I mean, anybody that's been, that's been a, a, a best-selling author in the field of philosophy spirituality, self-help, alternative healing, and any environmental issues such as, um, you know, how, how to reduce your pollution and to recycle. And basically, my show is bringing cutting-edge solutions to everyday problems and helping humanity to wake up. And that's, and that's I why I have you on my show. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's beautiful. I appreciate that. Um, and you also have a website. I do. DrAnnWest.net. D-R-A-N-N-W-E-S-T dot net. Yes, and, and on the site it talks about the different types of work that I offer with the nonviolent communication, the holotropic breath work, the uh, Reiki the couples counseling, uh, life, life coaching. Um, I've been doing this work for close to 30 years. So I, I have, I have quite a lot of stuff that I like to, to share. And you started when you were five, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I started having spiritual experiences when I was about six. <laughs> <laughs> became a Reiki master at eight. <laughs> well, let's talk about what a nonviolent communication teacher and workshop leader is. Okay. Well, I've been teaching nonviolent communication, compassionate communication um, at Harbin Hot Springs for about four years now and uh, teaching workshops every week. And, um, I, I teach people how to communicate in a way that doesn't trigger the other person. So a lot of couples come to me to try to figure out how can I talk to my partner so he understands me, but I don't trigger him and we don't end up in a fight. And there's a languaging that helps people to really share their feelings, be honest about their needs, and not go into blame, shame, guilt, making wrong, criticism, or judgment. And when we can communicate in that way, we can really connect. We can connect deeper. We can connect with more authenticity. And um, we can communicate and not be afraid to communicate what our needs are. Most of us don't even realize what our needs are because we've never been told how to how to identify them so well, what are you talking about give us some suggestions about our needs well yeah. we all have we all have real needs in our life we have a need for like our, our basic needs to have our food our air our water our home our those comfort things that are the first things that 
we think about with needs, but we also have a need for touch and for understanding and for, and for compassion and for communication and to be included and to be, um, to be seen and heard and understood and acknowledged. So we have a lot of different needs and all of these are universal human needs. It's not just one person that has them. We all have those needs. When we get into, say, um, a discussion with someone and we're feeling like it's going into an argument and we're losing our patience and we, we, we start raising our voices and because we're trying to be heard, we're not feeling acknowledged, we, we can go into anger and that still doesn't get our needs met and we still haven't acknowledged what it is that we really need. But if we could just say, I'm feeling really sad right now and, and angry because my need to be connected with you isn't being met, then you're not blaming the other person for not giving you something. You're just identifying what your true needs are. I'm feeling <clears throat> scared, lonely, and depressed because my need for connection, for cooperation, for integrity, haven't been met. So you speak in a, in a new language. It's a language that's called life-affirming language rather than life-alienating. When, we've, when we, we live, when we speak in the normal, normal terms and languaging that we have in everyday society, you'll notice it's very accusatory, demeaning, violent in some ways. But when we use nonviolent communication, we use, our language becomes life-affirming. So we become less triggering, less toxic. And, and we, get, we get a lot more out of our relationships than you could ever have imagined was, it, was, was there in the first place. So I teach people different skills and I give them exercises. I teach them how to communicate with, with their partners, with their parents, with their children. I teach children to teach, to, to, to how to talk with other children so that they, they can learn this. When children get this at a young age, their lives change. So I give them tools. Um, I give them uh, ways to be able to either get their needs met in the relationship or find a way to get their needs met themselves. So some of the tools will help them to identify when they're going into exaggerated, like, like the communication is getting louder, they're losing their balance, they're losing their, their calm, and when that happens, they need to do what I call a connected timeout. So they need to know when it's time to stop the talking and take a breath and be in agreement with their partner that, hey, we're, we're moving into dangerous territory right now. We're, we're gonna, if we continue like this, we're going to have a blowout and we're not going to be talking for four days. So what can we do right now, this moment, to stop that from happening? And so it's those types of tools that I give to my, to my clients. Well, those are really good. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm listening with, it's like, Oh, give me more, give me more. <laughs> yes. Well, they're, they're, they're beautiful and they've been used with, for Dr. Marshall Rosenberg is the founder of nonviolent communication. He recently died this year. Um, but the, all of the work is, designed to help you to really stay more conscious with yourself and your communication and to really see where you might go into blaming and shaming someone, making them feel guilty. That type of language, we call that uh, language of the jackal. The jackal is used as a mascot to help us to visualize how and when we've gone into a lower form of communication. 
the jackal is an animal that's low to the ground, tunnel vision, uh, small-minded, mm-hmm. and is very quick to react. It will react with, uh, with, without much consciousness. And it goes into blame, shame, guilt, making wrong, criticism, and judgment. So that's what we call the jackal language or the jackal, inner jackal within us. And we've all got that. It's not that some of us don't have it. We've all, we've all, if we've grown up in this life alienating language world that most of us have, unless we had extremely conscious parents, then we've grown up and we've all, we've grown up with a little bit of the jackal inside of us. And this work helps people to identify that jackal inside of them and then make a choice. Okay, here's my jackal coming out because I'm feeling irritated. I have a choice right now to either move to a higher state of language and communication, which we call the giraffe. And the giraffe is the mascot because the giraffe gets to see the big picture in life. It has the largest heart of all land mammals, 25 pounds and, and, and bigger. It has a broad perspective on life because it has such a, t- a high view. Um, it, it has a, a, a very healthy way of creating a boundary without um, being violent. It doesn't, it's not a predator. And um, how, a, how a giraffe, it's, it's, it's funny that Dr. Marshall Rosenberg used the giraffe as the mascot because there was recently a documentary on uh, the Discovery Channel. And uh, this documentary film, the cameraman captured a giraffe, mother giraffe with a baby giraffe eating off of a tree, standing beautifully in the calm of the day. And out of the, the side started to come this lion and it was crawling on the ground creeping up on these these two giraffes and the cameraman caught all of this and the the lion was skinny ribby it was looked like it hadn't been eaten in days maybe weeks and it was very thin and it was had its eye on the baby now the mother giraffe saw this lion and instead of running because that would have Definitely, the, the lion would have gotten the baby. It used its ability to create boundaries, and it turned to the lion, and it sat on its back haunches, just sat down, and it pushed its front leg into the ground, strong, took a strong stance, and lifted its other front leg up, and curled it up, and stared at the lion. And we can only imagine what it was saying, but it if we could hear its word, its, its thoughts, it was saying, you come any closer to my baby giraffe and I will kick you because if I kick you, I will kick you so strong that I can kill you. And it just stayed there. It didn't move. It just stayed there with its right leg curled up, ready to strike. And the lion got the message and backed away. So that's why giraffes were chosen, because it knows how to create boundaries with compassion. See, it could have just kicked the lion, but it was compassionate about it. It gave it a chance. It was like, you need to clear off and go, because I will kill you if I have to. And and so when we we do uh, these teachings, you get to understand when you move into jackal reality, and how to get into the giraffe reality, how to become more conscious, more loving, more compassionate, more understanding, move instead of being in, in all of those resistance and make the wrong and judgment and all of that side of the jackal, you move more into curiosity and compassion and acceptance and understanding, reassurance and appreciation. They're, they're what you lean towards. And that is such a beautiful story. Mm, yes great yeah i love it um i you know how mysterious spirit is somebody i bought this collection and there was like five giraffes in it oh now i know why (laughs) really what kind of collection 
Uh, it was a rock collection, but it was an old collection. So, you know, there was rocks and stones and wands and, oh, my goodness, just nice. little tchotchke stuff. And she must have collected giraffes because there was a lot of, you know, pendants and, and just silly mm-hmm. giraffes, but cute giraffe stuff. And, and I'm going, okay, giraffe. Okay. (laughs) And now I'm going, oh, I think I'm going to go grab one of those giraffes and bring them home just to remind me. Yes, absolutely. How how do you not blow up on someone over the Internet when you kind of, you know, Internet conversations are so disjointed and (laughs) guilty by, by that. A lot of times, you know, when somebody writes something, I'll misinterpret it or... You know, and then I, I, it's so easy to just to punch keys in, right? And you got to, I guess, learn to back away from the computer so you don't really do dumb stuff. Mm. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, well, you know, it's good to breathe a lot when you're feeling, when you feel yourself triggered. Uh, is to, is first of all, to recognize that you're triggered, to, to really get in touch with what you're feeling at any given moment, because if you're not in touch with your feelings and you're just going on reaction, then you've just stepped right into the jackal reality. So staying conscious of what you're feeling and getting clarity. You could say somebody's written something on the internet and you're feeling that it, it, it was insulting or you, you felt something was uh, personal toward you then you would want to identify, first of all, what's the story you're telling yourself? Because the story that you're telling yourself about what you just read will lead you to your feelings. If you're telling yourself that that person was insulting you, then you will have those feelings of being, you'll be angry, you'll be upset, you'll You'll, you'll feel irritated and, and all the rest of your feelings that, that would come up. Um, You're the jackal. There's the Sorry. jackal, right. <laughs> yeah. I'm such a quick study, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. But if you can catch the story that you're telling yourself and let yourself know that's the story I'm telling myself, our thoughts are always suspect. Our, our, the stories we tell ourselves does not necessarily mean that that's the truth. And so identifying, if, is it really the truth that, that this, this, this person is insulting me? Is it really the truth? Because I'm, I'm telling myself that it is. But if you told yourself that that wasn't the truth, your feelings would change instantly. Because you, it depends on what, what you choose to believe in that moment. And then maybe get clarity. Can you get clarity from the person before reacting? Can you get clarity by saying, I would like to get clarity because I'm finding myself triggered right now. The story I'm telling myself is that you totally didn't, whatever it is that you're reading, that you totally didn't take my, my feelings into consideration or whatever it is that you're experiencing. Asking, Very well done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I needed to hear that. Um, but we don't have a lot of time left. So I wanted you to talk about your weekend health retreats. Oh, great. Okay. Well, um, I have a home in the uh, Napa County. And it's quite a, it's a nice large home that I do spiritual retreats and cleansing retreats at my home. So my clients come here for anywhere from two to five days. And I use ozone and oxygen therapies, which are totally non-toxic and extremely profoundly healing because oxygen helps to remove toxins, pathogens, amoebas, fungus, mold, uh, herbicides, pesticides, cancer cells, anything that is, that is um a positive ion in the body is toxic to the body and oxygen is a negative ion. And so it attaches to the positive ion and pulls it out of the body with, without um, any negative side effects. 
it's totally non-toxic. So I, I, I use a lot of oxygen therapies in my detox weekends or days when the people come on retreat. And we do cleanses and uh, do uh, coffee and ozone uh, colonics and enemas. And we go on big hikes. We do a lot of processing of emotional uh, emotional past relationships or whatever emotions need to be cleared out. Um, I do a lot of work with that. Do the holotropic breath work as well. And help people to learn how to do, to live with healthy, clean, organic diets. And um, everything we eat is organic and, and beautifully cooked, or we do juice fasts for a few days, depending on you know, what, what the goal is of the, of the people that are participating. Some people may be eating a little more, some people may not want to and just want to do deep cleanses spiritual cleanses, emotional cleanses, physical cleanses, and we cater to all of that. So, And they get a lot of one-on-one time with me to really talk about their own emotional needs and, their, and, and processing and counseling. Well, I have to say, you sound like you'd be, uh, yeah, five minutes. We didn't get five minutes. Um, I'm sorry, and we're done with the show, but you can um, get a hold of Dr. Ann West with um, drannwest.net or the truth from the source show.com. Thank you, Ann, for coming. Thank you, on. Kathy. <laughs> well, welcome back, everybody. This is a Kathy Bilski Quantum Leap Let Light Unite show on Revolution Radio. And weren't those commercials fun? We accidentally didn't have Ann hang up, and that's live radio, huh? Um, And remember, you guys, that Revolution Radio relies on your donations because it's listener-sponsored. So come on, go to their website and just look up their donation button. This is not hard. Make some effort and donate something. It's because of your kindness and generosity that we're still on the air. And you know what goes around comes around. And I always say if you are feeling stuck in your monetary life, then give, because that creates space for the universe to bring you something lovely. And they've got all kinds of little goodies you can get. You can even buy our old programs. You know, so it's a mutually beneficial relationship. So come on, we really can use it. Um, Tis the season. And if you want to find out more about me, you can go to my website at www.angellightohm.com. I've got some incredible healing tools, which is really great for the holidays. You can give the gift of healing. Uh, I have a book. One you can get download for free. And the other, I think it's like a, wow, whopping $6. And it's how to communicate with the angels, how to work with love. I have a lot of my power prayers on it. And then if you go to my website and look under free healing, that's where I have my curse removal energy balancing that you can listen to. And if you go to YouTube, I have um, my soul retrievals on that and you can listen. I actually did a back-to-back soul retrieval if you really want some quantum leaps of your own. And just, you know, be careful how you use it and don't use it too much. Um, You can catch me on Facebook, and I do a lot of prayer work on Facebook, you know, allowing everyone to join in. Because the more the merrier, the more people that do join in, the stronger and the greater the energy work is. And it does make a difference. So I'm out there all over the place. And you can also come to my store, I almost forgot, in Honoka'a, Hawaii. And that's on the big island, you know, with the active volcano. But I'm not on the volcano side, so we're okay. And, oh, my God, you know, if you do come to my store, I have the largest earth keeper in Hawaii. It's over 1,000 pounds. It's an elestial smoky quartz. You can hug her and touch her and commune with her. And you can't do that in a museum, huh? And I have another earth keeper, elestial, which is now only 650 pounds. And normally I let people sit on him. 
and communicate with them. You can lay on my angel light table and I do little free mini massages with my angel light tools for those that are in need and are open to receiving. I also do the curse removal and of course the soul retrieval so you can get a much more you know, personal one-on-one -on -one than you would live on radio with 30,000 other people. But then again, with all these people tuning in, it's the energy work is always greater and stronger. So, yeah, and then I do a lot of phone work. That sounds dirty, huh? I met with energy work and Skype. So I'm going to share with you your radiation level for the week. And then we're going to talk about how to sign your name without assuming liability and then I'm going to do the curse removal and the energy balancing because there's no point in doing the energy balancing curse removal first and get you in this really high, nice, spiritual, happy place and then go, okay, let's talk about your radiation level. Okay, yay. All right, so I'm not going to do that. So we're going to do the radiation level first. And remember, you guys, anything above 20 CPMs is bad. So we're going to start at the highest red city in the United States and go down to the, the least, okay? So here we go. Little Rock, Arkansas, whoa, is 1,613 CPMs. Kansas City, Kansas, 1,531. Colorado Springs, Colorado, 1,483 CPM. San Diego, 1,449 CPMs. Miami, Florida, 1,407 CPMs. Spokane, Washington, 1,355. Worcester, Massachusetts, 1,319. Louisville, Kentucky, 1,315 CPMs. Navajo Lake, New Mexico, 1,309 CPMs. Raleigh, North Carolina, 1,300. Fresno, California, 1,294. Memphis, Tennessee, <clears throat> 1,267. Champaign, Illinois, 1,265, Idaho Falls, Idaho, 1,258, Phoenix, Arizona, 1,235, Amarillo, Texas, 1,208, Bakersfield, California, 1,168, Pierre, South Dakota, 1,157, Harrisburg, Virginia, 1,154 CPMs. Now remember, anything above 20 is bad. Bismarck, North Dakota, 1,151. Denver, Colorado, 1,134. Portland, 1,124 CPMs. Billings, Montana, really dropped down to 1,101. Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1,098. Lexington, Kentucky, 1,095. Riverside, California, 1,080. El Paso, Texas, 1,078. Charleston, West Virginia, 1,068. Tucson, Arizona, 1,062 CPMs. Rapid City, South Dakota, 1,045. Concord, New Hampshire, 1,034, Pittsburgh, 1,029, <laughs> okay, ready for this, Washington, D.C., at 399 CPMs. Now, I mean, I don't know what they're doing to stay protected, but it would be nice if they would share it with the rest of the country so we could do that to ourselves. So, What's really bizarre is the most radioactive weather in America this week is Little Rock, Arkansas, and that's like in the middle of the country, guys. Now, 32 cities exceeded 1,000 CPMs radiation level this week. Another nine cities are clustered between 999 and 900 CPM, ready to break out anytime. 
So you guys, you have to be really careful when you go outside, when you play, when you work, when you fly, <laughs> and when you breathe, for God's sake. And this was put together by Bob Nichols and bless his heart. You know, he is helping us stay on top of the radiation level. So let's talk about how to sign your name without assuming liability. Bet you never heard of that, huh? So what does a signature mean? So I'm going to tell you right now that when you sign something, no matter what they say, it means that you accept liability. And if you don't read and agree to everything you sign, you're making a big mistake. So people will ask this incredibly lovely author often, um, how does one sign their name and maintain their rights? We all know that before they let us go, they always want us to sign something to keep us coming back. There are other points in the legal system where a signature is expected or required before the court can proceed as well. I have heard that adding under duress or all rights reserved to a signature when signing a document will maintain our inherent human rights. And while this could work as well, the proper and Latin way to sign under duress is to add a V C, and that's the capital letters, V is in Victor, C is in Charlie, and you don't write Victor Charlie, you write the capital letters V, C before your name. So vi coacatus, abbreviated to V, C, is a Latin term, and the website Wikipedia cites the definition as constrained by force, used when forced to sign or else. Perhaps the most famous use of V. Cocos when signing a document was that of Cornelius de Witt. Alexander Dumas captured the event as follows. The grand pensionary bowed before the will of his fellow citizens. Cornelius de Witt, however, was more obstinate and notwithstanding all the threats of death, from the orangist rabble who besieged him in his house at Dort. He stoutly refused to sign the act by which the office of Stadtholder was restored. Moved by the tears and entreaty of his wife, who probably said, sign it or we're all going to die, idiot. He at last complied, only adding to his signature the two letters VC, notifying thereby that he only yielded to force. There is a scant authoritarian of information regarding this term on the web. However, on the One Heaven Society of United Free States of Spirits website, the following information is provided. Now, the bar wants you to sign as surety. At at key points in a court case, the bar members want you to sign certain documents. Why? Because your signature is like your vocalized consent. It can be legally interpreted as your agreement to be surety for an obligation and to perform as well as to waive other rights. Do you have to sign? No, you don't. But in many cases, the bar has designed a system so that if you don't, it is interpreted as dishonor so that they can invoke their power of attorney powers to declare, <clears throat> to declare you delinquent, incompetent, and send you to prison anyway. <clears throat> This is why you may have heard of people who refused to sign the papers when entering prison and yet were treated worse than most serious criminals. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, had to have a drink. 
So these guys that refused to sign the paper are treated as the most serious of criminals with complete apparent ignorance of their rights. Why? Because the system is designed at certain points where you must sign. So how do you overcome an unjust and unfair system that forces a man or woman to sign under duress against their will and yet interpret such signatures as valid under canon law? The answer is making sure your signature follows a clear mark of duress. Vi coctus. Before you sign anything under duress in order not to be unfairly determined as in dishonor and incompetent, you may lawfully initial in large capital letters, the letters V, C, where you will sign and then sign your name after, always after. That V, C stands for is Latin for vi coactus, which means literally under constraint. This should normally be sufficient on any document which you're forced to sign to bear witness to the fact that it was done under duress. Now, at the earliest opportunity before the court or official, you can make it known that upon review of your signature, it can be proven to have been forced under threat or coercion and so cannot be used as legally binding agreement. In some locations and in some prisons, as this knowledge grows, it's possible that law enforcement officials may start to reject such signatures, adding more threat and force on a person to sign without using VC. It is your choice remembering that if you allow such criminal intimidation and torture to prevail and do sign without protest, then the system can simply lie and state you made such a sign of your own free will. So if they tear up the paperwork and demand you do it again, stating that such a signature is unlawful, then such claims are against the laws of the Roman cult canon law, the actual law that underpins their own statutes and regulations. However, if after several attempts they still refuse, there is a second method equally valid, the use of the ellipse. Now, when in threat of intimidation, or outright right rejection of lawful protest is too great, then a second and equally valid method of signing under protest is permitted, namely the use of three full stops, place first, followed by the signature, so that the three dots are not obscured by the signature. This is called an ellipse. So it's like taking... Um, quotation marks at the beginning and at the end, and then three full dots. So this indicates that legally there was a form of words you wanted to state, but were unable to due to some event, and in this case, because of threat or coercion. Thus, at the earliest opportunity, the ellipsis can be revealed and it can be stated that you intended to write VC, but were prevented, therefore nullifying any agreement. So that's how to sign your name without liability. Okay, let's get right to the energy balance and curse removal. And for those of you um, that haven't participated before, it really helps you put in balance and I open all your chakras, which are your energy centers in your body. It kind of helps you breathe um, energy and help you connect with the creator. So you have one at the top of your head, which is the crown chakra and your third eye, your throat, heart, 
your solar plexus, belly button, root, feet, hands, spine. And it help, it makes a difference in your life having them open. You know, if you're someone that um, doesn't express their feelings, well, you're going to have heart trouble. Or if you're someone that really doesn't really speak your truth, well, there's a good chance you're going to have problems with your throat. So to get all these... We're going to get all these chakras open and flowing with energy. And at the end, I remove curses. Now, what is a curse? Well, it can come in many, many forms. You can have someone actually do voodoo or black magic or witchcraft and curse you through ceremony. Or you can have somebody just get really angry at you. And if they use the power of the spoken word, that's creation and that's putting an emotion and depending on where you're at the karmic wheel is how badly you're going to get hit. So we get rid of all that. And, you know, people do this all the time. It's really scary. Now, I always say, show me a country that doesn't curse and I may move there until I found out that country was way up in the Himalayas with this group of people that... Um, that live over a hundred years old and they've got the most incredible village where, you know, they walk the talk of love and kindness and sharing and, and all that good stuff. But my God, it's way up in the Himalayas and I can't do, you know, 65 without freezing my rear off. I would never do the Himalayas well. So anyway, um, people do curse. They do it unconsciously. And sometimes, you know, you can do it and then get that karmic feedback, which is going to hit you in the butt. So we're going to clear all that out. And um, hopefully you'll have positive forward movement. So what I need you to do is sit down, put your feet flat on the floor, your hands in your lap like you're going to receive. And just start taking some gentle deep breaths and not so you hyperventilate on me, all right? And while you're doing that, I'm going to surround each and every one of you in your own bubble of light. And I'm going to add the golden flame of knowledge, the blue flame of protection, the violet flame of transmutation, the green flame of healing, and we're going to seal you in the pink flame of love. And I'm going to tell, call to your teachers, guides, masters, and all the divine beings that are working with you, and we invite them in to help us make this energy work as gentle, loving, and kind as we can make it. And wherever you hurt, I want you to imagine one of my angel light tools on that area with a big crystal coming out of it, and it's just... Imagine um, angel light, which is a blue rock and slices in like a little cupcake and then this big crystal coming out of it. And you're going to put that, imagine that going wherever you hurt. And it's going to help you release any stress or trauma you may have taken on. It doesn't belong to you. So take one more deep breath and exhale out everything that no longer serves you. And imagine that energy going through the violet flame back to God. And you fill up with your divine essence. So I want you to imagine this incredible divine healing energy coming down from God, coming into the crown chakra, the top of your head. Now feel it flow through your brain. And as it flows through your brain, feel every cell and molecule of your brain reconnecting to the creator. And as it reconnects to the creator, you become a more conscious being. You're more intuitive. Answers are there. You see things clearly. You're calmer. You're compassionate. And you have lots of abundance coming into your life that you're drawing to you. So as that divine healing energy flows through your brain, allow it to now to flow out through your forehead, the middle of your forehead, your third eye. And now feel that energy drift down even farther and allow it to come out of your throat chakra. And now let that energy flow down even farther and feel it come out of your heart chakra. 
And now allow that divine energy to flow out of your solar plexus, which is right below the heart chakra. And now feel that divine energy drift down even farther and allow it to come out of your belly button chakra. And now feel that divine energy flow out of your sacral chakra. And now feel it flow down and out of your root chakra. And feel that divine energy flow all the way down your legs. Imagine it going off out of your feet and send it into the earth. And now feel that divine energy flowing down your arms and out your hands and let it flow down your spine. So I want you to take another deep breath. And this time as you exhale, imagine yourself releasing everything that no longer serves you. And imagine that unwanted energy going also through the violet flame back to God. And you fill up with more of your divine essence. So as you're doing that, I call to Michael the Archangel to come forth and cut all ties to any energy you've taken on that's not yours. Whether it's from a friend, relative, acquaintance, stranger, anybody you work with, TV, set, animal, whatever the karmic reason is it created anything out of like, out of balance in your body or your, your life today. And as all that unwanted energy is peeled off of you gently like an onion skin, it all goes through the violet flame back to God and you fill up with your divine essence. And now I want Michael to come forth, cut all ties to reptile, dinosaur energy, secret societies, organized religion, cut all ties to any oaths, vows, curses, hexes, rituals that could have been done to you or your families going backwards and forwards, hundreds of thousands of generations or anything you could have done, consciously or unconsciously. And as all that unwanted energy too is peeled off of you gently like an onion skin, it all goes through the violet flame back to God and you fill up with more of your divine essence. And now I want Michael to come forth, cut all ties to any effigies that have been misused against you and that's any elemental of yours was used to hurt you or anyone, including anything you own, clothes, hair, or picture, your name spoken, written, just thought of, or anything you have your energy on, and as ties to all those elementals are cut. I call the violet flame through them to clean it up, the angel light energy to heal. We release all that unwanted energy back to God, fill them up with love, and we command them to be neutral or only emit love. And now I want Michael to come forth, remove any energy implants that could have been done to you or anything that could have carried over from any other lifetime because of dark magic, voodoo, or dark witchcraft. So I want the stick, pen, needle, or knife that's in your crown chakra removed from your third eye, your throat, heart, solar plexus, belly button, root, feet, hands, spine, your eyes, ears, nose, mouth, hips, teeth, anywhere in your body that's out of balance. And as you feel... All those pins, needles, and knives being very gently removed. Imagine all those spaces immediately fill up with the violet flame to clean it up, the angel light energy to heal. We release all that unwanted energy back to God and you fill up with more of your divine essence. So I'm going to call the Michael again to cut all ties to any implants that may have been put in you, whether it was physical or on an etheric level. And as that energy is cut from you, we see it being cleansed by the violet flame, reconnected with God, commanded to be neutral. And I ask that it's released from your body very gently later on. And now I call to Michael to come forth, cut all ties to patriarchy, genocide, rape, incest, slavery, prostitution, persecution, circumcision, removing any energy overlay that's trying to manipulate you keeping you from connecting with God, healing yourself, being really successful, fulfilling all your divine missions and living your life in joy. And as all that unwanted energy is gently released, it's keeping all these wonderful things from coming to you. We send it through the violet flame back to God and you fill up with more of your divine essence. 
So if there's anybody out there that's directing any kinds of dark magic at you, whether it's through ceremony or um, just thoughts, just remember, if they were really good at what they did, you'd be dead. Okay, so they suck at what they do. And if they're doing it to you, they're doing doing it to others. So we're going to ask them to step forward in the light and stop doing that dark work. And if they choose to continue, which is their free will, we ask their higher self and guardian angels to put them in a position of harmlessness. We surround them in a bubble of mirror. The mirror faces them. It's two inches from their nose. And as long as they do that dark work, that energy stays contained in the bubble of mirror. I also add the violet flame to the bubble of mirror to transmute any of their dark energy so they have no forward movement. And this bubble of mirror stays up 365 days a year until they do works of good. So I call to your higher self and I ask your higher self to activate your divine blueprint for perfect health. You know, the one that you created before you incarnated into this lifetime. And we're going to ask that it starts manifesting now. I want you to allow all this energy now to integrate in a very gentle, kind, loving way with your cells, your atoms, your molecules, all your internal organs going all the way down into your DNA. And with every breath, Feel more of a centering, a calming. You're very clear-headed. So we're going to call also a little bit of that hematite energy just to help you ground a little bit. And feel that energy come up through your legs. And again, you should feel a little bit heavier, but very, very centered. And take one more deep breath. And as you exhale again, let all that energy integrate in a gentle, kind, loving way with your cells, your atoms, your molecules, all your internal organs going all the way down into your DNA. And if you're still lightheaded after the show, you need to ground even more and either go hug a tree or hold hematite, eat, take a bath, a nice, warm, relaxing bath. But please do any of that because you need to come down because we, you know, the energy work is really, really high. So what we're going to do is do a little work with Israel. And do a power prayer to help Israel become an awakened country. And if we have time, I'd like to do a short protection prayer for the Palestinians um, because Israel certainly is um, committing genocide. And, you know, I always wonder about a group of people that keep saying we're the chosen one by God, and that's all they say. You know, we're the chosen. Well, chosen to be what? Finish the sentence. Chosen to be the biggest douchebags on the planet? that commits genocide against anybody that you don't like. They're certainly not God's enlightened chosen people on the planet. That's for darn sure. Because if you were, you certainly wouldn't be committing <laughs> genocide against the Palestinians. I mean, that is a no brainer. And if you all go back in history, I mean, the Israelites, wow, the Jews back then, we're nuts like they are today. You know, if they wanted a country, they would just go take it and kill all the people. Sound familiar? Old patterns here, boys. And this one time where they did it, God got so pissed off at them that he took their tribes and scattered their tribes in all directions. You know, it's amazing. And now they're back together as one tribe, and what are they doing? They're trying to annihilate the people who rightfully have that land, and that's the Palestinians. And they're refusing 
to come up with a two-state solution because they're so damn greedy they want it all. And what really gets me, and I find it macabre, black humor, is they are poisoning the Palestinians with all these DUI weapons and poisons and toxins. And where do they think it's going to go to? It goes in the air. There is not a wall they can put up high enough that's going to stop those poisons and toxins from going on to Israeli land, which they've confiscated from the Palestinians. You know, go ahead and ask the Israel people that are living there, how many of you now have cancer? Because all those chemicals and poisons that you tried to that you gave to the Palestinians leaked into the water. Your water supply, and it's killing you also. Yeah, I'd be really pissed off at your government if I were you. They certainly don't care about the normal people, do they? Boy, it'll be so nice when we quantum leap the world into enlightenment and all this crap stops. So I put together, like I said, a couple power prayers. And one's a power prayer directed at the Israeli government and to help them reconnect, you know, the Israeli military to the creator. Because if you're connected with the creator, you don't do some stuff like this. Killing and being proud of your killing and lying about history saying the Jews really created the Holocaust when it was actually Germany and Hitler. And, you know, we might, not, might as well add in all those big, powerful industrialists that were back then, including Ford and, and GM and, and GE and, God, all those guys. All right, so let's do it. So put your feet flat on the ground, put your hands in the air again, but... This time, I want you to feel yourself, this golden antenna come up from the top of your head and reconnect with the creator and feel all that divine energy come pouring into your body and let it flow down your arms and out your hands. And we're going to form this bubble of light and put this power prayer in there. So let there be light in the name of the presence of God, which I am through the magnetic power, the sacred fire vested in me, I command. We call to the higher selves of all Israelis, asking them to stop creating genocide. Step forward in the light, which results in peace. And if you choose not to, which is your free will, we ask that if it's for your highest good, that the creator now send their karma back to the Israelis for what they are doing to the Palestinians a hundred thousand fold. Now, then, let it be done. And I stand aside as it's returned. We ask that all Israeli are reconnected to the Creator and become awakened spiritual beings that is full of compassion, kindness, and love. We ask that all illegal Israeli settlements going up and or being built, that they are now put back into Palestinian hands. We cut ties to Israel and all religious groups trying to manifest Armageddon and using Israel as a patsy. We cut ties to all old Bible stories that is creating this hostility between the Arabs and Israel. We violet flame all those old thought forms now. May all the rats, mice, termites, snakes, spiders, fleas, Flies infect all Israel equipment of war, so all will break down. We ask that all the decision makers in the Israeli government to step toward the light of God and stop this unnecessary genocide against Palestine, as well as speak only the truth. And if you choose now not to, which is your free will, I ask your higher self and guardian angels to put you all in positions of harmlessness and replacing your position with a human of peace, love, and compassion. Let's send more light energy to all those Israelis that stand for peace. May they be sent all they need 
to be successful in their missions, as well as divine protection. See the peace movement growing and becoming greater than the war energy. Let all decision makers be divinely inspired on how to create a, a two-state solution in peace. And again, nevertheless, not our will, but thy will be done. And take a deep breath and release it. All right, so I'm going to ask that you join me again in creating another bubble of light. And in that one, we're going to put a prayer of protection for the Palestinians. In the name of the presence of God, which I am through the magnetic power of the sacred fire vested in me, I command. I call to the creator, angel, spiritual hierarchy, and all the cosmic beings of light to give us their assistance in negating all negative thought forms of destruction directed toward the Palestinians, replacing that energy with positive, peaceful, constructive thoughts. We cut all ties to all fear that is perpetuated by anyone regarding the Palestinians, including the CIA, Jesuits, the Pope, Israeli, Zionists, the United States government, or the broadcasting industry, again replacing the fear with constructive, positive thoughts. We command the angels and all cosmic beings to interfere with all plans of mass destruction and the sacrifice of any Palestinians as well as neutralizing all satanic plans for creating more chaos between Palestine and Israel going backwards and forwards thousands of years. I ask that the energy of racism towards the Palestinians be removed by Michael the Archangel, cutting the ties with this sword of blue flame since the creation of the planet until now. Let this be trailed, trailed by the violet flame to transmute all back to light. Let those thought forms be replaced with divine love. I ask the goddess of truth into everything on the planet that is trying to hide racism and bring it up to the surface. As she brings forward all secrets and hidden agendas, the Illuminati, Aryan Nation, the Antioch Baptist Church, the KKK, the Nazi Party, all dark politicians, Nazi skinheads, CIA, Jesuits, the Pope, the Israelis, the Mossad, the Rothschilds, are hiding or disguising regarding their practices. Let all anti Palestinian energy veils be removed from humankind so the divine may again come through. I command that all persons with negative thoughts or feelings toward the Palestinians step into the violet flame and then onto the light. I call divine light, divine wisdom, and divine caring, compassion to everyone's heart. Now letting kindness, caring, love come through for all. Let those stuck beings... For those stuck beings, I ask the creator to shut the reptilian brain down and activate the divine God brain. We see these beings become an awakened spiritual being that knows better than to hurt or harm any life form. I call to the higher selves of all life forms and ask that they now see everyone as brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, mothers, fathers, all one family. We ask that the creator work out how the illegal settlements and land occupied by Israel be returned to the Palestinians. We cut all ties to any music and all symbols that refer to the destruction of Palestine by any kind of weapons, cleansed by the violet flame, healed by the angel light energy. Then we see it, this energy being reconnected to the creator, now commanding all elementals to be neutral. We see all symbols, prophecies, and all music losing their energy as well as all forward movement. As prophecies may be changed, we put all our creative energies into seeing the state of Palestine a joyful, protected, and safe. We ask, O Creator, that all elementals of war, such as guns, explosive dive bombs, landmines, trigger mechanisms, planes, rockets, weapons, drones, all nuclear weapons, computer gases, germs, satellites, electrical towers, microwave towers, biogenetics, sound waves, and all weapons, as well as any advanced weaponry that we may not have thought of. For example, any off-planet technology that is meant to destroy any Palestinian life form on Earth or the Earth herself, and voodoo effigies that are being asked to her to destroy any Palestinian life on any level be commanded 
through the sacred trial of humans, angels, and elementals to misfire, disintegrate, choose to malfunction, or generally be harmless and take the path of love. We see all poison gas and aerosol canisters not working, so they will not release toxins. They will be stopped by the power of all that is good and true, that nothing but good shall circulate in the air. May all the rats, mice, termites, snakes, spiders, fleas, flies now infect all the equipment of war so all will break down. We cut ties to those that might want to release the illusion of an alien invasion, real or military created. Cut ties to all holographic machines, the computers that run them and satellites. When they try and communicate with each other, they receive nothing but white noise and lots of static. As all their high equipment, high-tech equipment malfunction and break down, all operators and technicians have memory problems as they all become dyslexic around their equipment. I call to all possible bombs that may be planted inside or outside Palestine, including nuclear, and ask that you break down and become totally unfunctional. We command the angels and all cosmic beings to do whatever they need to do to see that all of these weapons malfunction. We cut ties to Israel and all religious groups trying to manifest Armageddon and using, again, Israel as a patsy. We cut ties to all old Bible stories that is creating this hostility between the Arabs and Israel. We violet flame all those old thought forms now. Let's replace those thought forms with ideas of peace, compassion, harmony, and love. Let's send more light energy to all those Israelis and Palestinians that stand for peace. May they be sent all they need to be successful in their missions as well as divine protection. See the peace movement growing and becoming greater than the war energy. Let there be a two-state solution that is mutually beneficial for both Palestinians and Israelis. Let the love flow. Nevertheless, not our will, but thy will be done. So be it. Fill this bubble of light up with light and love, and let's take a deep breath and release it. So let's form another bubble of light. And in this bubble of light, I want to put your divine missions. And I want to put your divine purposes in this bubble. I'm going to ask Spirit to give them divine forward movement. And real quick, let's place all the people that you know that needs healing in this bubble of light. And you can just name them off real quick. And we're going to ask Michael to come in and cut ties with anything that's created any kind of dis-ease. And the angel light energy to surround them to help them release and pull out any discomfort they may have and accelerate their healing. And we call the higher selves of everyone you put in here. And I put yourself in this bubble of light also. And we're going to ask that everyone receive a very high healing that they need. And they're guided to whatever medicine in whatever modality they are open to that will work. And it comes to them now. I want you to see everyone hugging, okay? All right. Now I want you to put in this bubble, because it's a big bubble, people that you don't get along with. Yeah, uh-huh, those guys. Come on, put them in. You know who they are. And as you put him in the bubble, we're going to call the Michael again to cut the ties with whatever is creating any kind of out of balance and button pushing between you. And as that energy is released, we call the violet flame to clean it all up. And we're going to ask everyone that they're reconnected to the creator to become an awakened conscious spiritual being. And that you both forgive each other. And in your mind's eye, I know you can do this, imagine yourself hugging. All right, big hug. Okay, that wasn't hard. All right. 
and just know that something's been released. You don't have to be their best friends, but you can talk in a nice way toward them. All right, fill this up with light and love. And let's take a deep breath and release it. All right, so now we got to ground. So put your feet flat on the floor. And thank you so much for tuning in and giving this energy, this power work energy. It really is important. And if you really like the work, you might want to tell other people about it so they can join in. And, you know, the more people that are working together as one in harmony, the more powerful the work is and the quicker it manifests. All right, so I want you to yeah, put your feet flat on the ground and feel that earth energy come up. And as it comes up, your feet, feel yourself becoming very grounded, very centered, very back in body. And with every breath, Feel yourself becoming even more centered as your energies are pulled in. You're feeling a little bit more grounded. And you need to do this until you're not lightheaded. Now, if you're still lightheaded after the show, please hold some hematite, which is a rock. Or I like going and hugging a tree and having a mutually beneficial relationship with nature. And what all you do is put your hands on the tree and imagine yourself sending your excess energy into the tree and then just ask the tree to send your energy back and boom, you ground. And it's a nice little exercise, you know, if you're mad. Just do that. Send your anger into the tree. It's energy. The tree doesn't care. You're giving her an energy goose. And then ask her to send you energy back and you get, you ground. And if you're very sensitive, you'll feel the energy, the air get heavy and you'll get calmer and centered and you'll be able to make a decision. And it's awesome. Again, if you are, might want to eat after the show. Oh, what a good excuse to eat. You got to ground or take a lovely bath to help you you know, get calm and, you know, please do it because I've had people tell me that they, you know, just love the energy so much that they just couldn't get themselves to ground. And then they came back and said, oh yeah. And I was up for at least a day. And all I could say was, boy, I hope you got a lot of housework done and took advantage of it. So be cautious this next week and remember it. There is heavy radiation in the air. Do everything you can to protect yourself and your family. Take extra vitamins. You know, if you know people are outdoors a lot, get them to take cherry juice to strengthen their hearts. Eat better. Get water that, if you can, get a reverse osmosis water purifier and that will take the radiation and if you can't take a bath every night you can take a foot bath and put in the peroxide and the baking soda and the salt and it will also help pull out toxins from your feet so keep up the cleanses and really you know how you can really get back at the powers that be god stay healthy they don't like that at all because when you're healthy, you can think clearly and you're going to protest and you're conscious and you're not a couch potato and you have energy and you're filled with all this incredible divine inspiration. And on that note, aloha and have a beautiful week.